Welcome, everybody. My name is Craig Booth. I'm the founder and principal of Channel Force Incorporated. I'm also the host of the Channel Minute podcast. With me today is Brent Earlywine, a.k.a. the baddest man in channels. <laughs> he is a 10th degree black belt, 26 years as an instructor of martial arts. And as good as he is at self-defense and combat, he's even a better channel leader. <laughs> so thanks. Well, thanks, Craig. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So uh, people that have known me for a while, 30, 36 years in uh, martial arts and uh, uh, the current uh, art that I uh, study and teach it took me uh, 25 years plus to uh, to get to uh, 10th degree or, or judon. So I, I appreciate the introduction. So Brent Early Wine, I'm the, uh, the founder and principal for uh, Quantum Channels. Uh, glad to be here. All right. Well, hey, today's topic, let me share my screen. Uh, today's topic is building the ultimate channel territory plan. So uh, I know both you and I have been in channel sales for quite some time. We have been through quite a few uh, planning sessions to, to build channel plans for our uh, respective companies. I know this is a topic that is near and dear to both of our hearts. And I know you yes, and I have had really good conversations in the past. Uh, so I'm really interested in getting your feedback on obviously territory planning. So as a channel leader, let's jump right in. As a channel sure. leader, are you seeing uh, channel and account management teams building effective territory plans? If you are, what are the typical elements of a good plan and what are the typical problems with traditional plans? So I know that's a lot to cover, but uh, fire away. We'd love to get your perspective. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I'll start with, um, you know, have I seen or am I seeing um, teams building effective territory plans? I'd say that it's very sporadic, uh, first off. So um, I'm a big believer in uh, the planning process. I think the act of planning and the utilization of a framework um, is very healthy. And typically you get further and faster uh, when you go through a uh, specific framework. Lots of arguments and good discussions on, you know, what does the framework look like and what are the details and how do you structure a territory plan? Um, but uh, to me, that's almost kind of beside the point. Um, it's the the lack of not having a plan that I've seen um, is usually one of the biggest stumbling blocks. Uh, so I've got a couple of things that I usually um, uh, try to recommend to teams and I've used myself. Um, and I'll start with the idea that you know, you really need to, if you're an account manager, a channel account manager, or a channel account management team, uh, you really need to have a good holistic map and understanding of your territory. And here's a couple of things that I mean by that. Uh, first off, you know, you'll hear terms from me that I use all the time, plan the work, work the plan. And the second thing is no plan ever survives first contact with reality. Uh, but that shouldn't stop you from putting a plan together. Um, but what's underneath this is how do you understand what is your territory? So I'm going to use an example of, say, somebody that's got a, a geographical uh, patch in some way, shape, or form. You may have a vertical um, as a territory. You may have a solution-specific territory, so lots of definitions of territory. But at the end of the day, what's your target um, um, uh, market opportunity? So what's your total addressable market that uh, you have as an opportunity that you can go chase? Do you even understand that? If you have a quota, somebody probably knows that number inside your company. So uh, dig in, ask, see if you can get copies of it. Do you have an understanding of what's the market share that uh, you and your company have in your target solutions in your territory specific? Most people know market share on a national basis or a global basis um, as a company, but very few understand what their market share is in their own backyard. And then some of the other stuff that uh, the pieces that people miss or don't take a good look at is what's the economic data um, in your territory? And what I mean by that is who are the top employers? What are the top verticals uh, that are in your backyard? Um, by name for the companies, who are the top 10, top 20, top 50 companies that fit your target market and can you name them and have you documented them somewhere? Have you put them into your actual plan on targets? Who's your install base? Um, usually most people will know that, but that will lead you right to, if I have top 50 accounts and we have market share with 10 of them, then that gives me the next 40 or the ones that I wanna go target specifically by name. And then you gotta map out, you know, what does your partner community look like? Who are my partners? What are their capabilities? Um, going through some sort of scoring uh, process with them to uh, make sure you understand, are they good? Are they mediocre? Do they need some help? Um, and are they giving you the uh, the right kind of coverage and the right kind of skill sets and uh, market reach and opportunity? 
Um, and are they good at selling your stuff? So not just engage, but do they have the capabilities to actually sell your value prop with you and for you in the market? Mm -hmm. And then the last one that um, I usually recommend, um, and again, I think it gets overlooked a lot, is do you understand who the influencers are? So these may not necessarily be people that will buy your solution set, uh, but they certainly can influence it, uh, positive or negative. So those are consulting firms. Those are people that are third-party organizations, maybe they're professional services firm, what have you. But they have the ability to help you drive an opportunity, even though they may not be the ultimate end user. So these are all uh, characteristics of what I see in healthy territory plans and a much better and a deeper view and understanding what that territory should look like. So, Greg, I guess I'd, I'd flip the uh, the question back to you. So, you know, what are you seeing um, in terms of, are you seeing good territory plans? Are you seeing where there's gaps or holes where people need to do some work? Yeah, so no, no doubt. And, uh, you know, like the the first podcast that we did, I want to double back on your, your list there. First of all, really super comprehensive list. I love the idea of uh, understanding what's in your territory and making sure that you sort of build the plan around that. I also love the idea of understanding the capabilities of the partner community and how those partners can help impact sales for you. Um, so I'm all on board with that. As we look at uh, territory planning from the, the Partnerships 3.0 methodology, in other words, the, the, what I go out and what I try to deliver, as you know, the secret sauce for Channel Force is we're all about shifting the channel from a partner focus to actually individual active sellers. And by moving that focus downstream, it gives us a completely different view of the channel and allows us to turn the channel into a math equation. So for me, I look at territory planning and I break it into kind of three buckets here. So one is this territory and strategy planning. The second one is strategy resourcing and execution. And the third is measurement and accountability. So I want to build a territory plan that incorporates all three of these elements. And so for us, the territory planning starts with revenue model tool. And we want to, we want to model the revenue. So we start with the quota. We want to backwards engineer how we're going to get to that quota. So we want to understand um, the resources that it's going to take to get to that quota, the number of active sellers that it's going to require in order for us to meet that uh, quota. We want to understand conversion rates. We want to understand, um, you know, account coverage, engagement rates, um, average deal size, new funnel. So all the all of the the channel math that you see below here um, on the screen. This is really uh, the core to planning a, a territory from my perspective. And then that gives us a lot of great data. We can take that data start looking at who the active sellers are. We can go back and start scoring partners. We can go back and start scoring sellers. Um, and then we can take all of that information and start and start mapping accounts into the process. So this becomes a really super comprehensive uh, strategy and a comprehensive plan, but it gives us really good actionable data and it allows us to manage a territory by KPIs. So this is a little bit different than the traditional channel of, you know, territory planning, which is focused on partners. I'm taking this one step further, focusing on active sellers. How do we turn up those active sellers? How do we equip those active sellers? How do we measure those active sellers? And how do I tie it back again to a quota? So yeah, I tell you the the thing that I really um, like and appreciate um, on the uh, the methodology and the framework, Craig is. You know, you'll hear people utilize the the term the science of sales. So for me, this is as a channel leader, this is taking it one step further, right? So people will do some of this somehow, somewhere, but uh, these are the pieces that um, I don't see people doing um, either at all or uh, very um, uh, sporadic at best. But taking that next step to really connect the dots with number of active sellers and then a proactive approach into generating demand, engaging with the active sellers and the partners and really driving uh, towards results. So it's good to see that kind of logic of the science of sales being taken one step further. Yeah, and um, again, the other side of that is we have tools for each one of those elements. So we can walk you through, literally plug in data and spit out what your plan would look like. So I think it's it's um, you know pretty comprehensive. Shifting gears, right? Um, what? Tell me your best practice every partner pro should adopt to build better territory plans? 
Yeah, I'll give you uh, I'll give you two. Um, one, um, the the challenge and um, what I've seen in most territory plans is uh, the data will be kind of shallow. Um, and so what I mean by that is a best practice is you flip that on its head. You've got to go deeper and wider to really understand the territory. And that was part of some of the points that I was calling out uh, previously is really understanding not just the territory, um, but the economic data, the verticals, um, really, you know, what's your market share look like and then documenting it. Um, so again, it's it's a piece that, you know, you take one more step down that logic chain, you're gonna get so much further than the other. The second big piece that I'd say is a uh, um, best practice is consistency. So uh, it's also very common that I'll see lots of uh, uh, hard effort um, and then enthusiasm wanes and suddenly you skip forward six months, a year, 18 months, um, if somebody owning, uh, is owning the same territory and they, Put it on the shelf and it gathers dust and they never look at it again so that consistency of always keeping it current and using it as a tool is uh, critically important and when people do that it pays off uh, so deeper on the data to make sure there's a good holistic view on uh, what that territory actually looks like and documenting it and then uh, consistency in its use and application so yeah. what sorry go ahead no i'm sorry i was just say i love that consistency i think that is a, a such a great point and such a really good best practice. You you were spot on. We we build these plans and then we never follow through or focus on them. And to stay consistent, I mean, every channel leader should be using these plans as part of their, you know, quarterly business reviews and, and part of their weekly discussions with uh, with their channel team. So I love the idea of consistent. So Craig, what's uh, what's the best practice from your perspective? Yeah, so um, again, surprise, surprise, my best practice is all about active sellers, right? So, you know, uh, for me, what I want people to do as they're building their territory plans is identify their active sellers. And I want them to identify those active sellers by their reach to your target market, by their competency that they have to sell your solution, and by the priority they're going to place in selling your solution. So, what I do in my territory plans is I have uh, channel account managers identify their champions, identify the kind of the pipeline of the next set of, of folks that we can turn into champions. I want to understand who's neutral. Uh, I want to understand who's negative. And I want to build a plan in the territory to try and create the number of active sellers that we need to meet the quota um, based on the, on the, the uh, original territory modeling plan. And so it's about identifying active sellers. Um, the second thing is making sure you have an enablement plan. So you've identified those sellers. You've got to give them something, a recipe to go out and sell. So part of the planning process is, is equipping them with a recipe, enabling that recipe in the form of a sales play, making sure that you have goals and, and, and incentives that you, that you roll through. And then the final kind of best practice is just because you've identified the, the, the active seller and you've enabled that active seller, you still have to manage the process with that active seller. And so I have a little management uh, philosophy called 542. So that's, you know, five days a week, we're doing four engagements a day, um, you know, and I want two direct connects a month. And that'll allow me to, to reach and connect with 40 active sellers and manage 40 active sellers within a month. And so uh, the, the best practice is really taking things down from, again, that partner level, you know, showing up at the partner, doing the, the partner level stuff and actually engaging consistently day in and day out with the folks that are out proactively positioning your, your products. So that's the best practice on my end. Any comments or any thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd tell you that, you know, I think there's um, an immense amount of power in the um, uh, methodology and um, the idea of a framework, right? So um, putting that kind of structure in place and then executing against it and then holding everybody accountable, both ourselves as well as our partner active sellers that we're all chasing it. And it's being measured and very consistent as we uh, we go through that process. Oh, absolutely. Well, Hey, I think we're wrapping up again. This is the channel minute, not the ch channel hour. I know we're well over a minute. But uh, here's my kind of far, uh, you know, final comment or my parting comment here. Um, you know, anybody that's listening to this, if you guys want to kill your quota um, and build a next generation territory plan, you know, reach out to me, reach out to, to, to Brent Earlywine. Uh, we'd love to sit down with you, walk you through the tools that we have today, help you build a world-class 
territory plan that's going to help you kill your quota. So with that, uh, Brent, always appreciate you. Appreciate you spending time with, with me on this uh, podcast. Um, you're a star, and uh, we'll talk soon. All right. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.